Hey guys, I'm Matt from MWA Woodworks and welcome back to part two of my series on building this kitchen island. Now, if you haven't seen the first video yet, I'll go ahead and leave a link up here to check that out. In that video, I build the cabinets as well as the countertop. And in this video, I'm gonna go ahead and show you how I build the doors, drawers, trim, and how I installed it in my kitchen. So stay tuned for that and let's get started. Now for the drawer boxes and all the trim pieces, I'm gonna be going with solid wood. And for painted cabinetry, my preference is always to use hard maple. So the reason I like to choose hard maple in painted projects is because it's a very tight grained wood, and so you don't see any of the grain structure coming through your paint job. And since hard maple is a really dense and very strong wood, it can take a good beating on things like kitchen cabinets. This kitchen island is gonna get a lot of use over time, and so I wanna use something that can withstand that abuse. And as far as hardwood goes, maple is surprisingly cheap, especially when you compare it to anything that you can buy at a big box store. Even if you don't have a joiner or planer yet, your local lumber mill probably has pre-surfaced lumber, which means that the planing has already been done for you. But for me, I always buy rough lumber. It's the cheapest and I have the equipment to mill it down, so that's what I'm doing here. Once everything's been milled down to size, I cut my drawer parts to final width of the table saw. I then use a crosscut sled to cut all the parts to final length. Now that I have all my drawer parts cut to size, I need to cut grooves in all the parts to accept the bottom panel. This job is done with a couple of passes at the table saw, and this is going to allow me to sneak up on the perfect fitting groove for my quarter inch plywood. And as you can see here, I've got a fit that isn't too tight, but the plywood does stay in place when you hold it like this. Now because these are kitchen cabinets and people are going to be in and out of these drawers all the time, I like to put a small round over on top of all the drawer parts, which is going to protect people from getting little scrapes and cuts on their hands. This is especially true with hard maple because these edges are notoriously sharp. Now at this point, I just need to sand all these parts smooth before it's off to the finishing room. And because I'm going to be spraying a clear coat on these drawer parts using my HVLP system, I didn't film it. I really don't have a good way to protect my camera equipment yet while I'm doing this kind of work. But so you know, I am putting an interior water-based polyurethane on these drawer parts. Now I use water-based polyurethane here because the oil-based ones tend to yellow maple and I really want to keep that nice, bright, natural look to it. All right, so when it comes to building these drawer boxes, I decided to use pocket screws. Now up until this point, I've always assembled cabinet drawers by using locking rabbit joints. But I really wanted to try this method to see if it made any difference over time. I don't really anticipate there being a problem, but if there is, hey, I'm a woodworker and I can just make new drawers. And the bottom just slides in from the back side of the drawer and is nailed into place with brads. All right, with the drawer boxes made, I could move on to the face frame. So laying out the face frame parts was pretty easy because I made these plywood spacers which were the exact size of the drawer openings. That way I could make sure everything was properly aligned and properly spaced. Now if you remember from part one of this series, I combined three kitchen cabinets into one single island unit. This is because I wanted one seamless face frame to go over all of them. I'm using nothing but glue here on this frame, so I just begin figuring out the puzzle of clamps needed to hold this whole thing together. Now because I'm spraying finish on this, I went ahead and painted the face frame now before I added it to the cabinets. And the face frame is just glued onto the cabinet, so I spread some glue and then lay the face frame on it and begin positioning it right where I want it. And then I begin adding clamps, and clamps, and more clamps. And you'll see that I'm adding a little bit of padding between the clamp and the face frame so that I don't mar the freshly painted surface. The last thing you want is to have a clamp impression embedded in the finish. And as you can see, I had to get creative with using lots of different types of clamps to make sure that I had enough to get this thing fully seated on the cabinet. All right, with the face frame and the clamps, I went back to the drawers to install the slides. Since I'm using undermount drawer slides, I need to install these little clips under the drawers. These undermount drawer slides are really so nice to install. I don't know why I always thought that these would be harder to install than regular side mount slides, but they're actually easier because they have so much adjustability. 
They do have these little tabs on the back that you need to drill small holes for, but locating these holes is actually pretty simple. Just set the drawer slide on the drawer where it's going to be positioned and tap down with the mallet. Some people make special jigs for this job, but I find this method to be just as easy. Now once you drill the holes, you can test your fit with the drawer slide. See? Easy. And once you have that bit done, you just set your drawers onto the rails and press until you hear the click. The drawer is locked in and ready to go. All right guys, so when I need to install multiple drawers in a cabinet, I like to use a scrap piece of plywood as a spacer in order to get my drawer slides placed right where I need them. Now what I do is I start with the longest piece of plywood I need in order to get me the right height to put in my first set of drawer slides at the top. Then I just go to the table saw and I cut my plywood down to the next set of drawer slides that I need, get those installed, keep cutting the plywood, keep installing the drawers until I get to the bottom and I'm done. Pretty nifty trick and all you need is a scrap piece of plywood. So like I said, I like to install the top slides first. I then measure to see where my next set of slides needs to sit just above the face frame. I then cut my spacers down at the table saw and install the next set of slides. I repeated that same process for the third drawer. And I always save the bottom drawer for last and to install these slides I just use a few washers to get the proper spacing. And now the fun part. I check to make sure everything goes together perfectly. Now this is always the most nerve wracking part to me until I can see all the drawers are in and I can breathe a sigh of relief. All right, with those in, now I can work on the drawer fronts and doors. So for this cabinet, I'm just doing simple frame and panel doors and drawer fronts. And I begin by cutting all the frame parts to length at the table saw. The next step is to make grooves in everything for the center panels to go. I like using my dado stack for this job because I can make the grooves in one pass. But you can do the same trick in multiple passes with a regular ripping blade or any blade that has a flat grind tooth. Next, I use my tenoning jig to cut out the tenons on the end of my horizontal frame parts. These tenons are going to fit into the grooves I just made. Now, if you like this tenoning jig and this auxiliary fence setup, I have a whole video that I made explaining how I built it as well as plans so you can build one yourself. I'll leave links down in the description for more information on that. The center panels of my drawers and doors are made of half inch ply and I need to make a rabbit around all sides to go into the grooves in the frame. I just bury my dado stack into a sacrificial fence to make these cuts by running all four sides against the fence to make the rabbits. After that, glue up was easy and I got all my drawer fronts and doors in the clamps. These all go together the same way the tongues from the horizontal frame parts go into the grooves on the vertical frame parts with the center panel taking up the rest of the room in the grooves. And once the last door is clamped up, I can set them all aside to dry. The last detail to tackle before everything got painted was to make the side and back panels. These are just going to be made from quarter inch plywood and half inch material for the border detail. Now I'm just gluing these frames together since this is just trim and there's no need for more structural fasteners. I did the same thing for the back panel using scrap ply as spacers to make sure that I got my styles evenly placed. Once the frames come out of the clamps, I spread some glue on them and sanded the plywood where the frame's going to sit because I'm using pre-finished plywood here. I just added some heavy things to act like clamps. This was really my only option here because I was already using most of my smaller clamps on the face frame. Now to install the drawer fronts, I cut up some 8th inch spacers that I used out of some of the scrap maple that I had left over. And I also made this little one-time jig that's going to help me set the first drawer and door spacing on the bottom of the cabinets. I put some double sided tape on it and this is going to stick under the face frame and allow me a ledge to place the first drawer front on. This will make sure that I have a nice consistent and even gap with the bottom of the face frame. Before I do that though, I need to prep the drawer fronts for hardware. After locating where the holes needed to be, I drilled them and checked it against the handle. I always love it when I don't screw this part up. Yes! All right, so the method I like to use to install drawer fronts is that once I have the drawer front in place, I go ahead and put two screws in from the holes that I made for the drawer pull. Now this is going to keep the drawer front in place while I add screws from the back side that are going to hold this on. And when I'm done, I can just remove the screws in the front and then drill those holes all the way through to add the drawer pull. Just like that, the first drawer is done and I can just add a spacer to the top and begin the process all over again. 
This time I'll also use a spacer as a guide vertically to make sure that my fronts are all lined up. Now it's just rinse and repeat all the way up the cabinet. I also use my little jig to set the door height to match the bottom of the drawers and screw them into place. From there I can just add the last two drawer fronts. And that's that. Everything is done and ready to install. To begin the install, I get some help from my neighbor. He likes to lift heavy things and put them down, and for that, I am forever grateful. Now once the cabinets were in place, I quickly checked everything for level, and somehow, I don't know how I got this lucky, but this part of my kitchen floor was completely level. No shims were needed. Now that the cabinets were exactly where I wanted them, I added cleats by using some double-sided tape to place the cleats under the cabinets. The tape is strong and it's going to keep these from moving as I move the cabinets back out of the way. That gave me room to secure the cleats to the floor with 3 inch screws. And then I just moved the cabinets back over the cleats and fastened the cabinets to the cleats from the sides. Next I added my support wall to the back of the cabinets. Now I made the height of the support wall an eighth of an inch shorter than the height of the cabinets just in case things got wonky with shims and I needed some wiggle room. As it turns out, I didn't need to do that since the cabinets were already perfectly level as they were, so I just added the shims to the wall by tapping them in until they were flush with the top of the cabinet. I then could fasten the wall to the cabinets from the back and then fasten the wall to the floor. Next I trimmed the shims and for that I used my oscillating multi-tool. And the last detail was to add some elongated holes where I was going to fasten the top of the island. This is going to allow for seasonal expansion and contraction of the hardwood top. For the side panels, I fastened them from the inside of the cabinet. All the panels are going to be held on by screws. This way, if I ever wanted to repaint the island or even change the style of the trim, all I have to do is pull these off and make new ones. I'm using plywood spacers here to line everything up to make sure that I have enough room for the base molding later. All right, so you'll see here that I'm fastening the sides to the back with countersunk screws, which I'm going to deal with in a minute. Next, it was time to add the top with the assistance of my lovely wife. And once we got the top set in place, I could use a ruler to make sure that I had a proper reveal all the way around the cabinets. Now, to get the island top attached to the cabinets, I needed to drill a hole in the drawer dividers and then use an extra long drill bit holder to drive the screws in. And one final check for level. I still can't believe that I didn't have to shim those cabinets. And then I just reinstalled the drawers and added the doors. The final detail was to add the base trim, which I just fastened with brad nails. And then I added buttons to those screw holes on the sides. I went back and painted these when I did final touch-ups on the island. The only thing left to do was to fill these drawers and utilize all this great new storage space. And that's it. One kitchen island done. I really hope you guys enjoyed this two-part series, and I hope that it helped answer some questions that you might have about building your own kitchen island. If so, please make sure to leave me a thumbs up below and also leave me any comments so I know what you thought. I would also greatly appreciate it if you subscribe to my channel and most importantly hit that bell icon so that you're sure to be notified when I release new videos. Speaking of videos, here's a couple other ones that I think you'll really enjoy so please make sure to check those out and until next time guys, have fun in the shop.